My name is Gwyneth James. I am a partner with Cody and James CPAs. And today we are going to chat about you want to hire your first employee, huh? Well, that's a big step and there's a lot involved. And so you should never hire that first employee until you've come and spoken to me or someone equivalent. Because they're a lot more expensive than you think they are, employees I mean. So you have to make sure you've taken into account what all those costs are going to be. So first of all, you think you're going to pay this person minimum wage. Okay, 11, whatever that is, an hour, uh, it's changing on October 1st, 2016. But that's not what it's going to cost you because it's going to cost you CPP on top of that. So 5% on top of whatever you're paying them for CPP. Then there's going to be another amount for employment insurance, about two and a half percent for that. And then there's going to be another amount for WSIB, which keeps them safe. And uh, if they end up getting hurt on the job, that it provides them with an income. You also have 4% holiday pay, vacation pay that is, that you have to pay. And, uh, and then there's all those statutory holidays that you're going to have to pay them for or even pay them time and a half if they work those days. That all costs you money. So don't think that you can throw into your business plan, you know, 11, 50, 11, 60 an hour. That is not what it's going to cost you. Now step two is you call CRA or you go online and you get yourself a payroll number because you need to collect all of the tax and CPP and EI that you are take, deducting off of that person's pay and you're remitting it to the government by the 15th of the month following. And God help you if you miss one of those because they charge you silly penalties for being late on your payroll deductions. That sounds all well and good and easy, but it's a little bit of a tracking nightmare. So you have to make sure you have good records or you hire somebody to help you with that. Then of course, there's all of the other rules that are involved in being an employer. So if you are an employer, you should know what the health and safety requirements are. Ministry of Labor has a video that you're supposed to watch, that your employee is supposed to watch. There are all sorts of places available where you can find out that information that I'm rhyming off here. Uh, you can go on Canada Business, you can go on the CRA website. The whole Employment Standards Act that uh, you really should know, pretty much everything there is to know about it, that's on the web. Um, and, uh, and don't forget, by the way, that depending on what type of business you're running, there are actually different rules. Like there's a different minimum wage depending if you're hiring students, if you're hiring liquor servers, if you're hiring um, servers generally. So there are different rules for them. And then there's rules for um, landscapers. So for some reason, landscapers, probably because their season is so short, they don't have to pay overtime if they don't want to. Now, there are all sorts of rules like that. There are things you don't have to do. That doesn't mean you necessarily might want to do them anyway. So a client of mine is a landscaper, he does pay overtime, he does cover stats, again, doesn't have to, but that makes him a company people want to work for, right? So you sometimes will go a little bit above the minimum standards of an Employment Standards Act because you want to be a good employer, you want to be able to attract those good employees, you want them to be loyal. You have to be careful before you say, oh my goodness, I'm getting so busy, I need to hire somebody that you've done all your research before you do that because you can catch yourself in a real pickle if you haven't you know, made sure you really know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, uh, because the ultimate goal of running your business is that you're going to be working on your business, not in it. You find folks to help you run the business, you work on the business and work on its growth and making sure that it has good structure in place and it has the opportunity for building on the success of the, the grant, the foundation that you are creating. So, you know, it's always good to move to the step where you are hiring somebody to do some of the nuts and bolts of the business so that you can look at it as a whole and, and where are we going from here and how are we going to grow the business. But just make sure you follow all the rules because if you don't, that's one area you can get in a lot of trouble. When we're talking about hiring your first employee, congratulations. Now take a deep breath because you've got to make sure you've figured out the true cost of that employee. You have to make sure you've read your Employment Standards Act. You make sure you go to the uh, Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, and find out how to calculate your payroll deductions and remit them correctly. You make sure you've dealt with Workers Safety Insurance Board, WSIB, for that coverage. And then 
make sure you come up with some structures about how that employee is going to do their job, what you're expecting of them, some sort of a list of well, like a job description so that the poor person coming in has some guidelines to follow. Those are kind of your five things you do before you place the job ad. I hope these tips were uh, helpful to you as you grow your business and start to think about hiring or expanding your employee base. And do make sure you get advice or do proper research before you move on to that next big step.